illegal to spit in public. In 1904? I didn't know that. Careful, careful with that book, Nancy. That's my first law school book. You wouldn't have any from the 1800s, would you? Why, are you interested in law now, Nancy? American Civ. I've got to bring in the oldest thing I can find that represents American culture. <laughs> Why don't you talk to Judge Bell? He's more of a relic than I am. Okay. <laughs> Judge Bell? No, Grandpa said that I, I was this fellow. She's so pretty. Who is she? Someone I used to know. Except for me, right at the last minute. And Mr. Philby called from the Gazette. You forgot your collection again. How do you expect to keep a job? All right, I'm going. Don't use that tone of voice with me, young man. You will not go now. It's almost dark. I've got supper with... John! Come straight home! Hey, Will Coyman's dad took him all the way into Chicago to see the White Sox play the Yankees. Even let him drive the truck part ways. Mm. I sure feel sorry for poor Mr. Gleason, don't you? You mean Mrs. Gleason? Oh, sure, but she's in heaven now, and it's poor Mr. Gleason who's left all alone. I'm sure those five kids of his will keep poor Mr. Gleason company. Hey, Pastor was smiling at you all through service Sunday. <laughs> Pastor smiles at everybody, honey. That's his job. But wouldn't it be nice to have someone to go to the socials with and get out there and fix that fence and stuff like that? I don't like socials. And I've got you to fix the fence when you finally get to it. Sometime you and I take a trip. Save up and go see a game together. Sure, Mom. John, I know how much you want a father. I wish things had been different. I wish he hadn't been a soldier. That there was no war to go to, no France to... I wish he could have watched you grow up so smart and strong. I'd be with you now. If I could bring him back, I would. I know. I know that gets up earlier than I do. 
I owe you for last week. Ah, uh, don't worry about that. Here's what I owe you. And here's for next week, too. Thank you, ma'am. You know, you're such a reliable customer. I don't mind if you owe me a little bit every now and then. I do. Morning, John. Morning, Mr. Baldwin. Hey, what's for breakfast? Same thing you had an hour ago. <laughs> Lily has for dessert today. I've been starving myself. Oh, so we have no idea Gotta run out here, Lily. Coming. Big as a barn, and I don't mean from sweet cake. Oh. <laughs> Morning, ladies. Four coffees, Lily. And a smidge of your cobbler. By the way, that reminds me, I'd love to have your recipe for the Eastern Stars holiday cookbook. It's only members. Oh, for Pete's... Oh, how stupid of me. I'm sorry, Lily. She'd rather keep her culinary secrets anyway. Right, Lily? Right, Mrs. Wheeler. some stuff for my mom. Man, I'm glad I don't have no old lady crabbing at me all the time. Travis, I told you to sweep up that storeroom. Now. Trade my old man for your old lady? Started. Look, the deal is you can hang around here if you do my homework. I know. I don't have a pencil. So come on, let's see what you got. Something, isn't she? Saved my life, you know. Normandy. I was so busy shooting, I didn't even realize till the fighting was over. I reached in for my mess kit. Slug board straight through and stalled on the spoon. I was this close to gone. You fought in Normandy? Omaha Beach. The bulge. Sat up the South Pacific, huh? Well, there was some party. So I heard. You think fighting on land is bad? You should try sitting on battleship just waiting for the kamikazes to dive on in. What do you know about it, Howard? You're a 4F. No, no, he's right, though. Gentlemen, here's to the Pacific Theater. On me. Well, now, that's mighty kind of you, friend. I don't believe I caught your name. I don't believe I threw it. I can't believe you look. What are you doing here, Frank? How did you find us? It wasn't easy. I've been looking months for you. Why didn't you write me? Why didn't you tell me Get about it? Leave us alone. Mom? What's your name, son? John. John. You got your grandpa's eyes, you know that? My dad's eyes. I'm your father, boy, Frank Trenton. We 
I thought you died in France. Mom got this telegram, she said. How, how come your name... Get inside, John, now. But, Mom, now. No! Never mind your mother. You're not welcome here. I'll call the police. Now, don't get so mad, Lily. It wasn't my fault anyhow. You were the one who broke it off without telling me that you... If I had known, I would have done the right thing. You know how I felt about you. And I still feel about you. I haven't forgotten. Neither have I. Haven't changed a bit. Still playing hard to get. Where is he? Stay away from him, John. I don't want you to talk to him if he comes around again. But you said... I know what I said. Were you lying? You just have to trust me about this, John. How are you lying? Isn't he my father? He's not a part of our family. Is he my father? Yes. But his name's not Jack Bell. Bell is my name. And yours. You're not married? How come you're not married? I... It's too difficult to explain, John. Now, I want you to promise me you'll stay away from him. Promise. If he's my father, then I'm going to see him. John! she lie about the telegram in France and... Well, I imagine that folks treat a war widow better than they would a gal with a son and no husband. No, I mean, why would she lie to me? In my experience, it doesn't do much good to worry about why a woman does what she does. Women are a whole different breed than men. They don't think like us. They got a whole nother language. They got all these rules that they don't tell you about till after you broke them. So... What do we do? Sit tight, wait it out. She'll come around. They always do. Hello again, Lily. Frank. I didn't realize I can go somewhere else if you want. There is no place else, Frank. What do you have? Oh, uh, just give me a special, I guess. Potatoes or beans? He's a great kid, Lil. Smart as a whip. You've done a great job. I'm just sorry that you had to do it all alone. Potatoes or beans? I wish I could make it up to you somehow. Potatoes or beans? Guess I'm not as hungry as I thought I was. Look, I know that you don't want him to see me, but he asked me to go to his game this afternoon. I won't go if you don't want me to. He has to be home by five. John, you can do it. Yes, sir. Lordy, 
what a hit. You got yourself a career there, son. I bet my life on it. You know, I think a friend of mine can get us some tickets to the All-Star game. Well, that's, of course, if your mother will let you take a little trip with me. I used to try to imagine what it would be like. You know, I've been meaning to get rid of this thing and pick up some civvy luggage. Really? Yeah. Come on. Remember I used to always whistle that tune coming up your walk? I was young and stupid, Lily. Cocky, fresh out boot camp. Scared of going over. I lost my head and I lost you and I've regretted it every day since. How many ways can I say I'm sorry? I don't want you to apologize, Frank. I just want you to go. Do you? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't think you do. Oh, Frank, no. <laughs> no. I'd be grateful somebody wants you. Get out of here. Yeah, I'm right. You had your chance, but I'm not walking away with my son. When I go, he goes. Can't. You have no right. I have every right in the world. I'm his father, remember? No calls, Mrs. Dean. It's a woman, a Lily. She says it's an emergency. Lily who, Aronson Stark? She says her name is Belle. Lily? I need you to take over things for a few weeks. Now, the Wilkinson case, you can get a continuance on that. What's wrong, Judge? Nothing. I have to go to Illinois. Mrs. Dean has the guest list. What's in Illinois, please? Business. Uh, family business. I thought all your family was in Baltimore. Uh, it's uh, just uh, my daughter. Daughter? Didn't know you had it. We're not close. Actually, we haven't spoken for a number of... We haven't spoken for 13 years. That's a problem, Judge. Well, she's, uh, she has, she had a son and uh, she wasn't, it was years ago during the war. Oh, what you're saying is she wasn't married to the father? Is that, is that what you're saying? She wouldn't even talk about it. We sent her to Margaret's sister till the baby could be put up for adoption, but Lily refused to do that, too. Broke Margaret's heart. Is Lily in some kind of trouble? He's back, the father. Lily seems to think he's dangerous. Dangerous? How? I don't know. Well, is it a legal matter, a police matter? I don't know. All I know is she wants me there. Well, the office is kind of slow these days. Mrs. Dean is nagging for a vacation. It's been a long time since I've seen the countryside. Oh, listen, Cobb, you don't want it. I won't get in your way. Maybe I can be of some help, you know, piloting that old Cadillac of yours. 
I'm going to be fussing with the road map at the same time. It's going to be very difficult. My daughter, Lily. Herman Cobb, I'm your dad's law partner. If I'd wanted to drag a stranger into all this... He's not a stranger. He's my partner. And if you're gonna get your back up about everything... Any chance of getting a cup of coffee? He grabbed me, and then he said he'd take John away. And, and then he left. Did anyone else see this? No. Look, if I hadn't fought him off... You don't know him like I do. He's, he's going to poison John. I've tried so hard to raise him right, and I'm not going to let that man just walk in and ruin everything. He's got no right. He's the boy's father. Mr. Cobb, do you want to know how I know Frank is dangerous? Thirteen years ago, we weren't young lovers who just jumped the gun on the wedding night. I was... That night, Frank forced himself on me. You understand what I'm saying? I tried to make him stop. I begged him, and he wouldn't. He said I made it fun, playing hard to get. That's why I wouldn't marry Frank back then. That's why I don't want anything to do with him now. That's why I have to keep him away from my son, don't you see? Why didn't you tell me? I tried. No, you didn't. You locked your door. You wouldn't come out of your room. You called me a tramp. Lily, I was hurt and angry. So was I. If you had just told me, then... Then what? What would you have said? That I shouldn't have been in the back seat in the first place, right? That's not the way you and Mom raised me, right? No, it's not. I have to get to work. I'll drive you. No, I'll walk. Help yourself to the kitchen. We'll get a restraining order first, then we'll hit him with criminal charges. You okay, Judge? Oh, I just need to sit a minute. Baltimore. Where is he from? What do you do in Baltimore? Uh, I'm a lawyer. Where is he from? He's a lawyer in Baltimore. I'm originally from a small town in Colorado. Originally from a small town in Colorado. Thank you. Hi.
Excuse me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, can you tell me when the circuit judge will be back around? Why? Oh, I need to file a restraining order for a client of mine. Restraining? Who for? Miss Bell. Miss Lily Bell. Miss? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Now, what the heck would Lily want with it? Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> that new fellow there, what's his name? Uh, Trenton. Yeah, he was saying last night over at Spencer's there about how he tried to kiss her and she swung at him with a shovel. <laughs> I'll tell you, though, that girl, she don't know a good thing when it walks up and hits her between the eyes. When is the judge coming back? Hard to say. Uh, can you tell me where the district court is, please? County seat. And that would be? North. Thank you very much. Sorry to have disturbed you. What did you tell John about me? That you were mad at me for marrying so young. He is in my will, you know. It was not my intention to deny him financially. Just in every other way. Damn it, Lil. You used to cut your mother to the quick. You called me and I came. I'm here. I know. I know. Honey, this is my father, your grandfather, Bell. How do you do, John? You're not going to keep me from my dad. He's here to help us, John. Your father tried to hurt me. You're lying. Just like you lied about France and being married. Honey. Son. Don't call me that. Trenton. How you doing? Where's the boy? Well, he's gone home. Wouldn't want him to break curfew. There's this uh, rumor going around about a restraining order. If Lily's upset with me, that's between us, right? I mean, we don't need a judge and jury for every lover spat we have. Mr. Trenton, it's not proper for me to be speaking with you. Look, Lily's one thing, but nobody's going to keep me away from my son. I don't know why you have to use this old thing. It's not as big as your other bag. You'll have to make two trips now. I 
don't want this restraining thing. Even if you get it, I'm going to see my dad anyways. It's up to you. Short and simple. Don't muddle him up with a bunch of oratory. Yes, sir. Now, remember what she said, that he was going to take the boy away and that he had every right in the world. And hammer home that she lives outside of town, no neighbors. And if I run into trouble, I'll bring up the earlier rape. No. I told you that in confidence. It's bad enough John had to grow up without a father. I don't want him to know this. If he's not here, he won't. He'll find out the way folks talk. I won't do that to him. Docket number 277. Requested order of protection. Plaintiff Lillian Margaret Bell. My name is Harmon Cobb. I represent Miss Bell. Which brings me to my first question. Uh, Miss Bell, why aren't you represented here by your esteemed father? If I may, Your Honor, I take to heart the old adage that says a lawyer who represents himself as a fool for a client. I believe that also extends to relatives. Well put. Go ahead, Mr. Cobb. Judge, as stated in the brief before you, an incident occurred two days ago between Miss Bell and Frank Trenton. Uh, Judge, I want to explain. You're out of order, Trenton. It's my courtroom, Judge Bell. I'll take it from here. Sorry, Your Honor. Who are you? Frank Trenton, sir. Well, then, Mr. Trenton, this is a hearing to consider whether or not a restraining order is warranted. Now, if I think it is, I'll give you 10 days to prove to me I'm wrong. I don't want to wait 10 days. Your Honor. Just hold on, Mr. Cobb. You're saying you want to show cause now before I've decided? Yes, sir. Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Actually, I kind of like the idea. Let's see if we can't save the taxpayers a little money and clear this thing up right now. OK, Mr. Trenton, I've got her side of the story. What's yours? Well. I kissed her all right, but she was opposed at the time. It says here you tried a bit more than a peck. Maybe I got carried away. But I did not attack her. She swung at me with a gardening claw. Your Honor. Just a minute. You swung at him? He's twisting it all. Your Honor, I won't hurt Lily. If she wants uh, me to stay away from her, I will. If I won't stay away from my son, I just found him, Judge, and I don't want to lose him again. You gotta let me use that. Your Honor, these proceedings are highly unorthodox. Counselor, this is my courtroom, and if I want to circumvent a lot of legal hoo-ha, then I will. Where I come from, that's called due process, Your Honor. Mr. Cobb, you try lecturing me again, and you're in contempt. Wouldn't let me open my mouth. Every time you did, you put your foot in it. Lily? Wipe that smirk off your face, Trenton, before I knock it off. Oh, yes, sir. Oh. Judge. Judge, you all right? I'm sorry, Cobb. It's not your fault.
my father. You have to come. What's the matter? He's dead. The judge? No, Frank's dead. They're holding my father for murder. Sir, I'm Judge Bell's counsel. I'd like to see him, please. Well, the chief's talking with him. He has a right to counsel, officer. Well, he didn't say anything to me about wanting any lawyer. Look, either I get to see Judge Bell right now or I'll file a complaint against this department and hold you personally responsible. trying to cooperate. Talking to the police without your lawyer present is not cooperating. It's just plain dumb. You know that, Judge. What did you tell them? I was sleeping in John's room. I'd heard them both up earlier. He was going off on his paper route. I fell back asleep. Then I heard Lily screaming. I ran out. Trenton was hitting her. They were over by the clothesline. I ran to Lily. By then, she was on the ground unconscious. He started for her again, so I grabbed the clothesline prop. I had to protect her. Where were you standing, Judge, when you swung the uh, clothesline prop? Well, between them. Not behind him? No, Cobb, I told you. I was protecting Lily, and he was coming for her again, and I... I know. You swung the clothesline prop, Caught him on the head, he keeled over dead. That's fine. Except for one thing, you're right-handed, the wound was on the right side. If you were between them, facing him, why wasn't the wound on the left side? Obviously, you never picked up a clothes prop. It's heavy as sin. I had to grab it with both hands and swing backhanded. It was justifiable homicide, Cobb. Now, we're going to plead not guilty on murder one, then we're going to subpoena everybody in Baltimore from the mayor on down as a character witness. All we have to do is prove reasonable doubt. just say that adversity never did soften his edges. He's fine, Lily. How's he taking it? How do you think? I have to make the beds, but I can't seem to go over there. Well, I'll help you. It's my job. I'll do it. Must have been horrible for you, no matter how you felt about him. Tell me something, Lily. Do you remember seeing your dad swing the clothesline prop, actually? I was unconscious. Oh, yeah, that's right. Frank hit you, and you fell, and then the judge came up from behind with the prop. No. No, no, he was between us. He was protecting me from Frank. Well, how do you know that, Lily, if you were unconscious? When I came to, he was still there between us. Can I get you something to drink? Mr. Cobb. Oh, yes, a glass of water would be nice. Thank you, Lily. Oh. Okay? Yeah. All rise. The third 
Judiciary Circuit in and for the County of Cook is now in session. The Honorable Judge J.G. Greaves presiding. Be seated. You grace us again, Mr. Cobb. Pleasure is all mine, sir. I bet. And in this corner, the celebrated Mr. Searide. Your Honor, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Deputy District Attorney Madeline Harold. Deputy District Attorney? Not too long out of law school, Judge. Uh, summa cum laude, was it, Madeline? Pleasure to meet you, Judge Grease. Well, isn't this a brave new world? All right, who's on first? Your Honor, in light of my client's reputation and the fact that he poses no flight risk, we request that bail be waived and Judge Bell be remanded to his own custody. Reputation or no reputation, a young man was cruelly murdered in cold blood, Your Honor. We request bail be set at the maximum. I'm going to disappoint you both. Bail is set at 5000 Your client comes up with that, Mr. Cobb. He can be his own watchdog. Jefferson Marks can testify to my standing with the Maryland Bar, my past presidency and all that. Hermione Goss can elaborate my civic involvement. Oh, and track down Judge Quinby. He'll be gangbusters as a character. I told you about Jefferson Marks, didn't I? And don't forget Judge Quimby. Now you want to double check your precedents. Milton versus Armbruster. I've done this before, Judge. We've got him out of blitz, Cobb. Make the jury eat, drink, and spit. Justifiable homicide. What are you doing? Taking the stairs. Oh. <laughs> After you, Mr. Cobb. Thank you very much. Some have come louder, huh? That's very good. When I went to law school, the only women there were the gals who dished out the mashed potatoes in the cafeteria. Ah, the dark ages. We're supposed to be home by two. Things took a little longer than we expected. That's the one thing you can count on in the legal system. <laughs> How about some fried chicken? Stay for dinner, Mr. Cobb? Oh, I think I'd better stretch my legs a bit and head back to the hotel. Thank you. Mom, could I go with Mr. Cobb? Well, honey, I think Mr. Cobb's a little tired. Never too tired for comedy. Be home before dark. I can carry that. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. You like to fish? No. You like baseball? Baseball, yeah. I like baseball. Then Quimby, then Faulkner, then Iris Rushmore, and we wrap it up with your testimony. Maybe we should review the prosecution's witness list. Judge, we've done it 25 times now. If I don't get some sleep, I'm going to nod off during my opening statement tomorrow morning. Well, I guess I'll turn in then. Unless you want to beat me in a game of checkers, John. I know these are lousy circumstances, John, but he's a good man. You should get to know him. Why? He never wanted to know me. You coming tomorrow? No. Nope. Mom won't let me. So what do you think's gonna happen? Well, the jury's picked. We'll make opening statements, then the prosecution will try to prove that your granddad had it in for Frank right from the start. We'll argue that the judge did what he had to do because Frank was stronger and younger and drunk. Think they'll believe him? Oh, I don't know. It's hard to say. I sure wish I had an eyewitness, though. But with you on your paper route and your mother unconscious and the clothesline not talking. I just don't understand how he could do it. 
He's trying to protect your mother. No, no, I mean... my father. How he could do something like that to my mom. What do you mean, family business? Mr. Seawright's brother was killed in an auto accident, Your Honor. My condolences to Mr. Seawright, but how are we supposed to begin this trial without a prosecutor? Your Honor, I am the prosecutor. I've worked from day one with Mr. Seawright on this. I've got... A lot going for you, Miss Harold, I know. But as the presiding judge, I feel there's someone with more experience. Nobody else knows this case like I do. You wouldn't even think of replacing me if I were a man. Your Honor, I agree with you. Uh, I don't think Ms. Harold should be cutting her prosecutorial teeth on my client. We're willing to waive our right to a speedy trial until the DA can send down some professional help. Mr. Cobb, my only reservation was that Ms. Harold might not feel ready to solo just yet. If she says different, that's fine with me. <laughs> Let's hear your opening statement, Miss Harold. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been assembled here today to consider what appears to be the impossible. Stoddard Bell, a judge renowned for his integrity, murdered Frank Trenton in cold blood. Given the strength and size of Trenton, the fact that he was raving drunk and brutally attacking <coughs> Lily Bell, my client had no choice but to grab that clothes prop and swing it as hard as he could to save his daughter. Would any of you have done otherwise? Since we started late, let's break for lunch now. One hour. All rise. The key to being a hostile witness is very simple. Do not be hostile. No matter what she says, stay calm. Otherwise, she'll use your anger for her own purposes. Wait a minute. Oh, you don't have to do that, Lily. No, 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 no. Take it. But if you didn't actually see your father swing the clothes prop... Objection. We've been over that. Withdrawn. <sighs> you and your father have been estranged for how long, Miss Bell? Thirteen years. And in all that time, you've had no communication with him? No Christmas cards? A birthday card? No. Yet he came immediately when he heard Frank Trenton was in town. Why is that? Oh, uh, that's an objection, Your Honor. She's asking the witness to speculate. I'll allow it. Miss Bell? <clears throat> he, he was concerned for my safety. Now, you petitioned this courtroom for a restraining order against Frank Trenton, and you were refused. Afterwards, did your father try to assault Frank Trenton? on the steps of this courthouse. Did he say, wipe that smirk off your face or I'll knock it off? He was upset. Why? Why was he so upset, Miss Bell? Why did he rush out of here and make threats and strike out? Because he loves me. And he would do anything to keep you safe. Withdraw. Your Honor, uh, request the witness have a few moments, please. I'd never allow that cheap questioning in my courtroom. It was leading, it was speculative, it was effective. She's winning in there. Well, you haven't had your crack at the jury yet. 
Judge, I don't want to say this, and I know you don't want to hear it, but I can't do this. I wanted to help, but I can't be a party to you hanging yourself for a crime I don't believe you committed. God. It won't make up for the past. Not to Lily, not to John. That's enough. Time. All right, Miss Bell. Let's pick up where we left off. Your Honor, I have something to say. Judge Greaves, I'd like to change my plea to guilty. I request a recess, Your Honor. Order. Your Honor! Everybody quiet now, please. Judge Bell, are you saying now that you're guilty of the murder of Frank Trenton? No. Lily. No, Dad, I won't let you do it. I did it. It was me. I killed Frank. I killed him. It was early in the morning, about six o'clock, I guess. John was out delivering his papers. I was hanging up the laundry. I was just getting the clothesline prop. Then suddenly, he was there. I tried not to upset him, but he was drunk. He said the tougher I made it, the better he liked it. Dad came out and took over. Hmm? Well, you're left-handed. That matches his wound. I didn't mean to kill him. I just wanted to stop him. The arraignment's set for tomorrow morning, Louie. We'll plead self-defense, but we're gonna have an awful tough time proving it. Why? You saw my face. Yeah, but the bruises are gone now, and what the jury can't see, they usually find hard to believe. So what do we do? We point to something they can believe, evidence of an earlier assault against you. No. Lily, I can't build a solid case without that rape. No. John's been through too much already. I can't let him know he was conceived under force by a drunken man. If he ever found that out, he'd think I didn't want him. I can't risk that. Papers are here. Come on, John. You've got a job to do. You need to get up and do it. Why? Because it helps. Why aren't you playing? Hey, wait up for me. Feel like kicking everybody's teeth in, don't you? I know. When I was a kid, I had to walk half a mile to the roadhouse every night to fetch my dad home. One night I went for him and he was gone. Just gone. I was nine. Did you hate him? Hated everybody for a while, especially the folks who told me I was better off. I know you're angry with your mom, but don't nurture it. Don't let it get between the two of you. She had her reasons. Look, I'm not angry at her. I'm scared for her. I must have died and gone to hell. Your Honor, the charge is murder in the first degree. Request defendant be held without bail. Judge. 
Uh, my client who acted in self-defense is the sole support. Save your breath, counselor. She lied under oath, conspired to let an innocent person stand trial for her crime. Your client is in for the duration. No bail. She can testify to her injuries, and we've got the medical report. I still don't think it's enough. There must be some other incidents of violence in this past. If he was such a hothead, he must have taken a poke at someone or jumped into a bar brawl. I want to help. Son, I don't think... I want to help. John, we may have to dig into Trenton's past, and you might find out some things about him that you wish you hadn't. I have to help my mom. Secret to longevity, Mr. Cobb. Either that or my invitation to a heart attack. I suppose my offering you a lift might be construed by some as a conflict of interest. No, ma'am. Not if we don't discuss the trial. <laughs> Thank you. you for what you did for me in court the other day, getting the judge to keep me on as prosecutor. I appreciate it. I wasn't being nice. I just thought it would help me if I had a green opponent. Yeah, well, your green opponent was winning. So aren't you going to ask me? Why law? Why not marriage or babies or maybe some nice, respectable secretarial work? None of my business. It's everybody else's. You're a lawyer because your daddy was a lawyer, or maybe your grandfather. And you grew up hearing from him that you could be anything you wanted if you kept your mind to it. The fact that being a woman made it more difficult for you to become a lawyer than it had been for him made you like the idea even better. Well, that's new. Most people just assume I'm some kind of a freak. You're no freak. You're the vanguard. And what does that make you, Mr. Cobb? Makes me sorry I'm old. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for the ride. See you in court. OK. Who's that? That's the opposition. Here, catch. What is it? Testament to your granddad's connections. Names and addresses of everybody in Frank's platoon. You gonna write them all? No, you are. Nobody knows a thing. What if none of this works? And we'll try something else. She told me to stay away from him. 
Uh, just on what you told me, none of this would have happened. Not your fault, John. Why not? Because your mother doesn't want you there. It's not fair. I've been helping. She's my mom. I should be there. It's not fair. No, it isn't. But right now, my only concern is to help your mother get through this trial. And if she says she doesn't want you in the courtroom, then by golly, you're not going to be there. I need you to be here anyway, John. May get something in the mail or a phone call or a telegram. You know how to reach me at the courthouse. Cobb. Appearances can be deceiving. An old adage that my mother drilled into me way back at the dawn of time. Lily Bell appears to be a woman different than other women because she chose to raise her son alone without a father. Frank Trenton appears to be a regular Joe trying to rekindle the flame with the one that got away. Why the situation appears to be kind of sweet. But appearances can be deceiving. Ask yourselves the question, why wouldn't Lily marry the father of her child? Why was she so desperate to keep him away from her son? After all, he was a war hero, it appeared. Everybody liked him, it appeared. Was she crazy? Or was she terrified? Because she knew that beneath the war hero, there was a man prone to violent outbursts. A man who would brutally beat a woman at the slightest provocation. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to look past appearances and see the reality of the situation, which is a person's right to defend themselves. Self-defense, self-defense, self-defense. Do you recognize this object, Judge Bell? It's my daughter's clothes prop. And when was the last time you saw it? I believe the last time I saw it was when you entered it into evidence at my own trial for the murder of Frank Trenton. Now, you never testified at that trial, did you, sir? No. But your daughter did? Yes. Do you recall her testimony regarding the clothes prop? Well, not verbatim. Feel free to paraphrase. She said she swung missed Trenton, and he beat her unconscious. When she came to, I was standing between them holding the prop, and I had told her that I struck and killed Trenton while attempting to protect her. Was that the truth? No. So your daughter lied on the witness stand under oath? Yes. Judge Bell. Would you like to tell the court what really happened that morning? Lily's screaming woke me up. When I got outside, Trenton was lying on the ground, and Lily was standing over him. Was she holding the clothes prop? No, it was on the ground. And you asked her what happened? Well, it was obvious she killed him in self-defense, like she says. You mean the same way she said earlier under oath that she didn't kill him? That she was unconscious at the time of the murder? Objection. Withdrawn. Judge Bell, if it was so obvious to you that it was self-defense, why did you try to cover for her? Why didn't you simply tell the police the truth? Well, I wasn't sure it would be obvious to the police. Or to a jury, I suppose. What was it that made it so obvious to you that it was self-defense? He'd hit her. Her face was all bruised. Did you see him hit her? I know my daughter. She could not kill in cold blood. She couldn't willfully swing a board at a man's head? No. Well, we've heard earlier testimony that she swung a gardening claw at him. Judge Bell, the reason that you lied to the police, the reason that you were willing to be tried and convicted of a crime you didn't commit, isn't it because what was obvious to you that morning was that your daughter, Lily, had simply killed a man she hated? No. Oh. 
How's Mom? She's fine. She's fine. Did she testify? Did you? Yeah, I did. And what happened? First day is always slow, John. Did you check the mail? Yeah, nothing. Well, we should hear from somebody soon if there's something to hear. What if we don't? If you've concluded your case, Miss Harold. Excuse me one moment, Your Honor. With your permission, Judge Greaves, I have one more witness to call. Oh, no. That's an objection, Your Honor. Uh, there's no mention on the witness list. He's just come forward. I haven't even had a chance to depose him. Well, then how do we know his testimony will be relevant? Approach the bench. <laughs> Joseph Baldwin to the stand. Joseph Baldwin. Who is he? The milkman. What does he know about all this? I don't know. Aren't you going to depose him? He's our milkman. He's also the jury. I solemnly milkman. swear that the testimony you're about to if, give uh, the truth, we the whole push for time out here, look like God we're scrambling to hide something. Jesus. Let him testify. We'll take care of damage control. State later. your name. Joseph Baldwin. Mr. Baldwin, please state your occupation for the court. I'm milkman for Plainfield and the rest of the county. Do you recognize the defendant? Yes, ma'am, Miss Bell. Miss Bell is a good customer. On the morning of the 16th, what time did you arrive at Miss Bell's? Same as usual, a little after 6. And where was she? She was over to the clothes line. She was hanging up laundry. Was she alone? No. Mr. Trenton was with her. How did you know it was Mr. Trenton? He'd been in town less than a week or so. I'd seen him around with John. Plainfield's a small town. New faces kind of stick out. So you could see what Miss Bell and Frank Trenton were doing over by the clothesline? Well, I couldn't see it all. See, I had parked the truck in front as usual, and I'd come around the side of the house, hadn't yet reached the porch, and I saw across the yard while well, the laundry was flapping on the line, sheets and things. But it, it looked to me like he was proposing to her. Proposing, not arguing. Well, I couldn't hear because I was too far away. And I couldn't really see their faces because of the distance and the laundry flapping. But he was on his knees in front of her, and he had his hands up, kind of like this. What did Miss Bell do next? She grabbed the clothes prop and hit him on the head. Speak up. She grabbed the clothes prop and hit him on the head. Order! So you saw Miss Bell strike Frank Trenton in the head while he was kneeling before her. Now, like I say, the laundry was flapping, but I know she hit him. And what did you do? I left real quick. Mr. Baldwin, why are you coming forward with this now? Well, I like Miss Bell. And she's always been nice to me, and I don't want to hurt her. 
but I couldn't forget what I saw. I talked about it with my wife, with my preacher. We all prayed. I couldn't just forget what I saw. No further questions, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, request a break before I begin my cross-examination. I'll bet you do. Reconvene in one hour. I've already told you, Mr. Cobb, it didn't happen that way. He saw you hit Trenton while he was on his knees. He couldn't have. Frank caught the prop with his hand that time. That time? Okay, you're going to tell me exactly what happened, and you're not going to whitewash it because I'm not your daddy, I'm your lawyer. He proposed, all right. Not the kind of proposal you think. Getting down on his knees was a joke. His idea of rubbing my nose in it. He said I couldn't fight him. Everyone was on his side, the law, even John. He said I could give in and have fun, or he could just take it like he did the first time. So then you grabbed the clothes prop. I was angry, and I, I just wanted to scare him off, so I swung. It, it was awkward. I didn't swing that hard. I wasn't close enough to hit him anyways. He caught the thing with his hand, threw it on the ground. I tried to run away, but he grabbed me and started to hit me. Why didn't you tell me this before? I thought it would sound bad. Sounds even worse coming from somebody else. Mr. Cobb, I appreciate everything you're doing for me. I know you're doing it more for my dad than for me. I am going to pay you what I owe you, I promise. It's okay. I just want you to be honest with me. I will be. I am. But I also pay my own way. Mr. Baldwin, did you actually see Trenton get hit in the head with that clothesline prop? Well, the laundry was flapping. A yes or no? Well, I thought... Yes or no, please? No, sir. Uh, did you go over to see what happened? Uh, maybe to help? I didn't think it was any of my business. I just left. Didn't even deliver the order. I'm a milkman, Your Honor. It's part of my business not to see more than I ought to. And in fact, you didn't actually see all that much, did you, Mr. Baldwin? No further questions. testify to this, Mr. Conley. Good. Uh, let me work out the logistics. I'll call you by tomorrow night. And thank you again. You too. Well? John, would you run to the mercantile store and get some sandwich stuff for supper? No, I, I typed the letters. I, I mailed them. I've got a right to hear. I, I've got a right. John, I don't think you ought to hear this. Harmon, it's okay. This Conley and Trenton were army buddies. He says that they were in the German countryside when they heard that the war had ended in Europe. That night, they decided to celebrate and went out looking for something to drink. Got to a farmhouse. There was a woman there, a young woman, all alone. She refused to give him anything. Trenton got angry, and he beat her up, and he, and he... T 
hearsay. It's permissible. It shows that Trenton was a violent man with a history of attacking women. It goes to Lily's state of mind. He'll never allow it. He might. I wouldn't. Well, what do you want me to do, Judge? I don't have any witnesses. The one piece of evidence that could possibly help me, I'm forbidden to use. I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm scared to death. And I don't know what to do. Your Honor, it's the defendant who's on trial here, not the deceased. Judge, I'm trying to show that my client acted in a reasonable manner, considering the type of man she was facing. Whatever Trenton did outside the parameters of this case is immaterial. Hold on, Miss Harold. I decide what's immaterial here. Now, Mr. Cobb is right. This evidence could be permissible. However, I'm not going to allow it unless you can prove to me that Miss Bell knew about Mr. Trenton's wartime escapade before she struck him. Now, can you do that? No, sir. If you can't make that connection, I don't see how it contributed to her state of mind at the time of the murder. And I can't allow your witness. I want you to take him, Dad. I know it's a burden, but he's really a good boy. Don't talk like that. Cobb's not done yet. We've still got your testimony. You never know what a jury's going to do. You have to do it, Lily. You have to let him use the rape. Mm. Damn it. Your stubbornness is going to get you hung. Why did you lie for me? I guess I felt I owed it to you. Why did you let me? I guess I felt you owed it to me, too. It's happening all over again. You could say three words and clear up everything. And destroy my son. And tell him the truth. Oh, you're the one for the truth, aren't you? Always putting it off on everyone else, Mom especially. How ashamed she was, how I broke her heart. You did. She forgave me. You want me to forgive? I want you to admit it. All right, yes. You broke my heart. Daddy, you broke mine. I don't want to lose you, Lily. Well, we half expected it, didn't we? How was Mom? Did she do okay? Did they believe it? I'm hopeful. Some orange juice? 
Hey, I had a paper route when I was a kid. Didn't like it very much. I swore I'd never go into a profession that had anything to do with newsprint, dogs, or early morning exercise. <laughs> you got a lot of papers. You must have a big route, huh? Didn't you have a different bag? No. I could have sworn you had a uh, thick... Uh, well, you're wrong. I killed three men in my life during wartime. Three that I know of whose faces I saw. I've never let go of those faces, and I've always been sorry. But I never doubted that I had to do it. You know, it struck me, John, that you'd never lied to me before, unless you'd been lying all along. Philby over at the Gazette, he says about half your paper route didn't get their newspapers the morning that Frank died. You couldn't fit them into your backpack, so you had to make two trips. You had to go back to the house. I saw them by the clothesline. And I thought, I mean, it looked like he was proposing to her. John. He dropped his backpack. I found it when I came to. I stuffed it in the laundry basket. And then Dad came up. And jumped to conclusions. An old bad habit. This explains why a person who always pays her own way would let another person take the blame for what she did. Not because she was protecting herself, but because she was protecting her son. John, why did you keep it a secret so long? Why didn't you say something before now? When I finally got home, he... My grandfather was saying he did it. My mom told me not to say anything. We assumed that since he was a judge, then she went on trial and... 
I just never thought they'd send her to prison knowing about, you know. About what? Well, I'm not stupid. I mean, the big story about how they'd been so in love and if he hadn't have died in France and all. And he shows up and she hates him and, and won't say why. And, and he's kneeling over her that day and her, her skirts. I mean, it doesn't take a genius. Well, we'll have to fetch the jury back in. Miss Bell, obviously, I'm dismissing the charges against you. The rest is your call, Miss Harold. I'll have to speak with the DA, of course, but in light of everything, I don't expect we'll be pressing any further charges, Your Honor. What about the odds and ends? Perjury, uh, conspiracy, obstruction of justice? I think it's in the people's best interest not to detain Mr. Cobb in this jurisdiction any longer than necessary. John, I hope you realize just because there aren't going to be any legal consequences, it doesn't mean you're a free man. No matter how necessary it seemed or whether you intended to or not, you still killed your father. And that's something you're going to have to grapple with for the rest of your life. I don't think you can do it alone. He won't be alone. I'm glad to hear that. I'd still like to see the boy get some professional help, Your Honor. You mean a noggin doctor, that kind of hoo-ha? It's OK with us, Judge. Oh, suit yourselves. Miss Harold, since it's your idea, you can oversee it with the boy's mother. Okay, let's tell the jury they can eat lunch at home today. Counselor? Thank you. Thanks for everything. Backing me up with the judge and everything. What else could I do? You're the vanguard, right? Country air softened your brain. Maybe. I got to admit, I'm starting to feel kind of comfortable. Not me. Nothing like a little time in the country to make you appreciate the city. Actually, there's a nice little office on Main Street. Oh, no, sir. No, sir. I'm not going to spend my golden years representing hayseeds, chewing the fat with the folks at the diner, raising a few with the boys at Spencer's after a long, lazy, uneventful day. You're not railroading me into this one, Judge. Is that cobbler I smell? Yes, it's cobbler. 